Uh, we're going to have our scripture reading now. I'm going to ask the congregation to stand and read uh, with me, please. Now Samuel died, and all Israel assembled and mourned for him. They buried him at his home in Ramah. Then David moved down the desert of Paran. A certain man in Milan, who had property there at Carmel, was very wealthy. He had a thousand goats and three thousand sheep, which he was shearing in Carmel. His name was Nabal, and his wife's name was Abigail. She was an intelligent and beautiful woman, but her husband was surely and mean in all of dealings. He was a Calebite. Amen. How many of you know the story of Nabal and Abigail? Good. Then uh, we can just have closing prayer and we can go home. How many of you, how many of you are uh, named Abigail? I think we have one. Yes, thank you for being here today. This is your story. This is the story of Abigail. And she is an intelligent, beautiful woman. So ladies, this story is for all of you today because it is about success, blessings, and intentions. The last two Sabbaths that I have preached here in August we have been talking about intentions. The first Sabbath was about God's intentions towards us. And we learned that God has good intentions towards us. He has shown us in so many ways. And, and, and I don't know, don't know about you, but this week uh, I have seen God's good intentions towards me. I don't know if you can say me too, but I hope you can. Uh, as I prayed this morning, I know that there are many things that God has blessed us with this week that we don't even know about. Uh, I was going to see my mom this week, and I was going up into Canyon Country and towards where she lives from my house, and the road on, on Soledad Canyon was blocked, unusually blocked. And so I, I turned around and I said, I will go at another time because something is happening up there. I run Soledad all day long because that's the road that's in front of my house. I don't know the stuff that goes on Soledad when I'm not there. But when I'm on that road, I'm thankful for the protection and blessing of God. Uh, I, I, I try to be a good driver on that road, but I do know and I do call that road Soledad Speedway. And this morning, as I was having my devotions, I heard somebody doing a burnout and thinking, that's a good time to do a burnout. Uh, nobody around. Saturday morning, whatever. It's fun. I get to listen, and I test myself. Is that a Mopar? Is that a Ford? You know, is that a Chevy? Because they really like the street that's right behind my house that turns off of Soledad and goes up to... Golden Valley. They love that street. They just gun it around that corner and enjoy their cars. And I try to figure out which one is going around the corner without watching, without looking. But I don't know all of the protection that I received this week. Do you, do you know all of the protection that you received this week? Do you know the blessings of God in your life? I can't begin to even imagine what God had to do this week to keep me safe. Now, some of us are returning. I decided just to wear it to, uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's to show off, I don't know. Uh, but being in Oshkosh this last week, uh, I'm going to just tell you the fact that we did so well in putting up a town of 50,000 and taking it down again with as few incidents as we did have. I, I know we saw the ambulance there uh, three, four, five times, and... I'm just glad that we are at Oshkosh now. You think Oshkosh, but please uh, Google this sometime, even now if you want. Uh, EAA uh, Fairgrounds or, or uh, airport, just put in airport. Experimental Aircraft 
association. Those are the grounds on which we hold Oshkosh. And in a matter of hours, a town mushrooms out of the ground. And the services that have to be put in to take care of 50,000 people who want to live their lives in a normal fashion. They want to get up and they want to wash their face. And they want to go to the bathroom. And they want to take a shower. Just that alone is a huge, huge undertaking for 50,000 people. And there's so much that goes on behind the scenes that you just never know about. You just are very happy when you walk up to that bank of porta pots and you open the door and it's clean. I, I give total cred to the uh, vendor that they use this time by the name of Pit Stop. Yes, I'm going to say the name. Pit Stop was the name of the vendor this time, and they did an excellent job, at least on my street. Some others were grumbling, but on my street, they did an excellent job of keeping me happy with a generally clean porta pot situation. Now, you don't know these things until you are in a situation where there are no other alternatives. And so you are having to use the facilities that are given to you or that you have chosen to camp nearby. And I just want to uh, give a shout out to uh, those who went and those who will give a report to this church of Oshkosh in the first two Sabbaths of September. We'll have pictures for you. We'll have all kinds of things. So I'm not going to steal any thunder from that time. But just know that we are glad to be home and that this congregation was well represented uh, at Oshkosh, where 50,000 people camped. I don't know. Let's see. You, you, you have a picture in your bulletin today. That is an aerial shot of the uh, amphitheater. Just understand, uh, to give you some perspective, that the back side of that amphitheater is a quarter mile wide. OK? And we sat at the back. <laughs> and the people on the stage that you see at the front of that V, which is the second largest freestanding stage in the United States, were probably three or four centimeters high. So we didn't watch them from where we sat. We watched the huge, big Jumbotron uh, 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 video monitors that were almost as big as the entire uh, back of the, uh, our stage here today. So. Glad to be home, glad to be talking to you about success, blessings, and intentions. In our scripture today, the story of David and Abigail goes like this. Well, it begins with David and it also has two other main characters, Nabal and Abigail. Now Samuel died and all Israel assembled. This is the revised standard version. I'm using a different Bible today because as part of Oshkosh, my uh, usual Bible got rained on, it got wet, so I'm, I'm still drying it out. And they mourned for him and they buried him at his house in Ramah. Then David rose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. And there was a man. Okay, so let's, let's, uh, let's just take that for a moment. This situation, uh, David is not yet king. Who is king? Saul. Saul is the one who not only anointed, excuse me, Samuel is the one who not only anointed Saul, but also anoints David before Saul is dead and tells Saul that God is no longer with him, but now is with his neighbor, who Saul soon figures out, especially after David kills Goliath, God is with David. He is no longer with Saul. So now they are enemies. And Saul, uh, Saul is hunting. He's hunting David. And his, his cover, as you could think, his mentor, the prophet, the last prophet, is now dead. Do you remember, uh, and this is something I, I, I do want you to, to think about a lot because it's very important as we go forward as a church to realize this. Up until Saul, Israel had not had a king. 
they'd had a prophet. If they wanted to know where they were going or what they should be doing, they had but to go to Ramah and talk to Samuel, and Samuel would talk to God, and they would get a direct answer from God. I don't know about you, but uh, uh, I, I like that situation. And, and many of us, uh, I think that's how we do our lives. But there came a time when the people of Israel looked over the fence. They looked over the fence and they said, we want to be like those people. They thought that there was something cool about the people that lived next door to them and they wanted to be like those people. Maybe it was the pomp and circumstance. Maybe it was all the pageantry that went along with having a king that was so cool looking. They didn't have a king. They just had a prophet and, a, and an invisible God. So they wanted something visible. They wanted somebody to lead them and it was Saul, uh, Samuel's sad responsibility to transition Israel from a direct relationship, a theocracy, if you like, a direct relationship with God to now an indirect relationship where there would be a representative of God. I don't know if any of you who study prophecy are hearing what I am saying to you. That there was a, di there was a change from this direct relationship to God to now a representative of God who they would have to obey and give taxes to and give their sons to go to war, etc., etc., which Samuel warned them about and which God had warned them about, but which they said, nope, nope, we want to be like them. If you are at all like me, you know that there are times when we think like this. And it worries me. I just want you to know as your pastor, it worries me when we point over the fence and say, we would like to be like them. When we have a system of direct communication to God who knows us and who blesses us. That's just a, a quick parenthesis. Let's, let's go back to the story. But I think that that's important to understand that that is why David went to the wilderness. He went there to hide. He went there to be away and understand that when it says David went there, he didn't go alone. He had over 600 men and their women, children, flocks, herds, so you're talking about a town of maybe 2,000, 3,000? Okay, this was not a small group of people to hide, so he goes into a very big place, the wilderness of Paran. Now, there was a man of Ma'on, Ma'on, whose business was in Carmel. The man was rich. Okay, so now we're going to hear a biblical description of his bank account. Are you ready? 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. Ever heard another story in the Bible that described wealth in terms of sheep and goats? Jacob? Think of that story. Okay, he got wealthy. He made his uncle wealthy. And then his uncle made him marry his cousin, his his second, not second cousin, but his cousin's sister, and then uh, uh, he married the sister as well, and then he married the cousin that he really wanted to marry, and then he had to work for seven more years, and how did he get wealthy? God blessed him, talking about blessings today, talking about wealth, God blessed him, and he got lots of striped and speckled goats and sheep, because Uncle Laban said, I'll take all the regular ones, you get all the striped and speckled ones. And God blessed him, and, and, and he had a whole lot of those kinds of lambs, sheep, goats. His bank account grew. Here's the bank account. The man's name was Nabal, and then his wife's name was Abigail. The woman was of good understanding. Now, this is the, the Revised Standard Version. Others say wise and beautiful. So we're, we're being told that, that this was a stunning woman. But the man was, I love this older word, churlish. 
churlish. We, we don't use this word very much. It's, it's old English. But to be churlish, I'm just going to say mean and ill-behaved. And another fact that we know about him is that he was from the tribe of Caleb. Um, name Caleb's best friend. Joshua. Two, only two of Joshua and Caleb's generation. They were the only two that came out of the wilderness. The rest of their generation died in the wilderness with the people of Israel. David heard in the wilderness, so he's out in the wilderness, that Nabal was shearing his sheep. Okay, what does is, what is shearing his sheep mean to a shepherd? Okay, it happens only once a year, and you're going to take it to the bank. Because you're going to sell the wool, and everything that you have done to protect your sheep, everything that you have done to nurture your sheep, everything that you have done all year long is now going to pay off. Now these sheep were being taken care of in the same neighborhood where David and his very large entourage have been living. Let's see what happens. David heard in the wilderness that he was shearing his sheep. Verse 5, David sent ten young men, said, go to Carmel, go to Nabal, and greet him in, what does the Bible say? In my name. Okay? A uh, quick thing that uh, we'll deal with later on next month. Name, like in the name of Jesus, has to do with family. So when you say in the name of Jesus, you are invoking the family name. So he says, tell them in my name. This is David speaking. This is him speaking for his family. And thus you shall salute him. Peace be unto you and peace be to your house. Peace be to all that you have. This is a wonderful blessing. I hear that you have shearers. Now your shepherds have been with us. Your shepherds have taken your flocks, which is your, uh, 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 your bank account, and you have, have put that bank account into the wilderness of Paran, where we live, where we're trying to have an existence, and we did not harm, and they missed nothing all the time that they were in karma. In other words, your shepherds brought your sheep, brought your bank account, put it into the desert of Paran with us, and we didn't touch one curl of wool on any of your sheep or goats. In other words, they were safe as if they'd been in a vault with us. Ask your young men and they will tell you, therefore let my young men find favor in your eyes. This is now David speaking through his men again. For we came, we have come on a feast day. We've come on a day of celebration. Pray, give whatever you have at hand to your servants and to your, get this, isn't it so loving? To your son, David. That's like respect, man. That is total respect for Nabal. We have not touched your sheep. In fact, we have provided protection when we didn't have to. And, uh, you know, if you wouldn't mind, something that is at hand. I mean, don't even go into your larder. Don't even go into your storehouse. Just, just take from the bounties, take from the blessings that you have been given and uh, share a little. Share a little. When David's men came, they said all of this to Nabal. This is verse 9. In the name of David. And then they waited. Now here comes, here comes the bombshell. And Nabal answered David's servants. Who is David? Ow! Who is the son of Jesse? In other words, what rank 
You know, who does he think he is? There are many servants nowadays who are breaking away from their masters. Shall I take my bread and water and my meat that I have killed for my shears and give it to men who come here from I don't know where? So David's young men turned away and came back and told him all this. And David said to his men, Every man gird on your sword. Put on your sword. And every man of them girded on his sword. So you have 600 men who now are preparing for war, for battle. He takes 400 with him and leaves 200 behind to take care of the baggage. Sorry, lady. It's a, it's a tough thing. Uh, everything. Let's just say the, the entourage. I like that word a whole lot better than baggage. Okay. But one of the young men who had been in the meeting told Abigail, Nabal's wife, Behold, David sent messengers out into the wilderness to salute your master, and he railed at them. Yet the men were very... Now, this is one of the shepherds telling Abigail now, they were very good to us, and we suffered no harm, and, they, and we did not miss anything when we were in the fields as long as we went with them. They were as a wall to us both day and night, all the while we were with them keeping the sheep. Now, therefore, know this and consider what you should do, for evil is determined against our master and against all his house, and he is so ill-natured that no one can speak to him. Oh, my goodness. It's really tough if your name means stupid. Forever and ever, the name Nabal has now come to be known as an... I mean, this Bible is being very kind by calling him, calling him ill-natured. <laughs> In our modern vernacular today, we would call him just plain stupid. He was just churlish. He was ill-natured. Then Abigail made haste, this is verse 18, and took, okay, here, she now makes a move that is so amazing, and she's just praying all the while that it will be enough, and two skins of wine, 200 loaves, two skins of wine, five sheep ready dressed. I'm on honeymoon. We go to a restaurant in Greece. We were told nothing about this except that it was good food. And on the strength of that, we went. When we arrived, there was a whole sheep on the spit. Now that didn't deter us necessarily, except that uh, there were other things that they served us to begin with that we didn't want to eat, and they got upset with us. So after the salad course, uh, we left. Never did have any of that whole sheep on the spit. But that is what she's talking about here. She took five sheep ready dressed and five measures of parched or, or, or roasted grain and a hundred clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of figs and laid them on donkeys or as this Bible uses the word asses. And she said to her young men, go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she did not tell her husband, Nabal. Now, ladies, I need to have a word with you. If you're going to be like Abigail, in a telephone generation, just um, be careful. But I'm going to tell you that what she is doing is something that we can bless her for. And I want to say that... Uh, I have a wife like this, and I am so grateful to be married to this kind of woman. And she rode on a donkey and came down under the cover of the mountains. And behold, David and his men came down towards her, and she met them. Now, what, what had they just done? They had put on their swords. They were in battle uh, fatigues. They were in battle mode. And she is 
riding as a woman with a few servants and lots of food, and she is coming, and she is hoping the food will, will do, the, do, do the trick. Now David had said, Surely in vain I guarded all of this fellow has in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed, and that all that belonged to him, and he returned me evil for good. Now how many of us, I'm, I'm guessing 100% of us, can tell a story this morning about a time when we did good to someone and they returned evil for the good that we had done them. I think we could all tell that story. So here we might actually be rooting for David who is now planning to go and punish Nabal for doing evil for his good. In verse 22, God do so to David and more also, if by morning I leave so much as one male of all who belong to him. So he had no quarrel with the wives and children of Nabal's entourage. He was just going to kill all the men. He's going to wipe out his inheritance. He's going to wipe out his name from amongst the people of God. Even though he is a proper Israelite, he is a Calebite. And Abigail saw David, she made haste and alighted from her donkey and fell before David on her face. Now we think this is kind of crazy to go face down in the dust, but this is very much protocol. This is the way in which she knew she had to approach him and bowed to the ground. And she fell at his feet and said, upon me alone, my Lord, be the guilt. She is literally throwing herself under the bus for her stupid husband. Pray let your handmaid speak in your ears and hear the words of your handmaid. Let not my Lord regard this ill-natured fellow Nabal, for his name is, so he is. There's the Bible telling you Nabal means stupid and he is stupid. Nabal in his name is folly. The, this Bible says folly is in him. But I, your handmaid, did not see the young man, men of, the, the, of my Lord whom you sent. Now then, my Lord, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, seeing the Lord has restrained you from blood guilt. Have you ever been on your way to do something and the Holy Spirit has, has come down upon you and said, you know, you really shouldn't do this. This is, this is Abigail speaking the word of the Lord into David's ear saying, you really shouldn't do this. There's going to be consequences that you do not want. From taking vengeance with your own hand, now then, let your enemies and those who seek to do evil to my Lord be as Nabal. In other words, I, I know you have lots of enemies, and I hope they all perish like Nabal, but let, the, let this present which your servant has brought to my Lord be given to the young men who follow her. Uh, pray, forgive the trespass of your handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house. In other words, she knows that David is the anointed one. She knows that he is going to be the next king and that his line will be the line that continues on because my Lord is fighting the battles of the Lord and evil shall not be found in you so long as you live. Ladies, this is the most amazing counsel that David receives, maybe in his whole life. And he receives it from this lady who is literally laying down her life to save her husband. Men rise up to pursue you and seek your life. The, lo the life of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of the living, in the care of the Lord your God, and the lives of your enemies he shall sling out as from the hollow of a sling. Now David's the the slinger of all time, right? So here she is using the analogy that he knows very, very well about because he's a slinger and, and she knows 
Uh, God is gonna, God's going to hold you close, man. God's going to hold you close if you do not do this. Don't do this evil thing. Stay close. Stay close to God. The story is a good one because the success that, that David has is largely due to the fact that he follows God. And here, early on, while he is still being sought in the, in, in, in the desert of Paran, he is given advice. He's given, in many respects, uh, business advice. Because if you look at it, you're talking about a business where one man has protected the, the assets of another man, and he is now wanting to share in the, pro, in, 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 in the profits that come at shearing time. And the one who has the money is basically not wanting to be a sharing boy. Isn't that what my mother, isn't that what you mothers have always taught your boys and your girls? Be a sharing boy, be a sharing girl. He is not wanting to share. He's not wanting to recognize the blessings that he didn't even know about. So as you think of your own life, as I think of my own life, I think of all the blessings that God showers upon me that give me the success that I enjoy in life. I mean, I'm successfully alive. I, I, I didn't have a heart attack this morning. Ever thought that that's a blessing from God? That we don't even think about? So here you have, here you have a man who is blessed by God. He has thousands of animals that have been all protected by another man who has been a blessing to him. And when that man reveals himself, David reveals himself as the protector of his bank account, he does not want to share. Today we're talking about success and we're talking about blessings and we're talking about intentions. Nabal's intentions were to keep everything to himself. Not to share. Not to recognize where he got his blessings from. And for that, he is known now in the Bible, as, as Abigail says, as his name indicates that there is folly in him. There is, we could say there is stupidity in him. And why is he? Because he's not recognizing where the blessings come from. And his intentions are to keep everything that he thinks he made for himself. David does not kill Nabal. Abigail's entreaty works. David is very impressed. He is so impressed that in a few days, really, it really wasn't much longer than a few days, when Nabal suffered a stroke. Now, how do I know it's a stroke? Well, the Bible tells us that he became like a stone. He was alive. But he wasn't moving. So I think that's the Bible's best description of the fact that Nabal suffers a massive stroke. He is laid out. He's alive. But he's not there anymore. A week later, he dies. A week after that, being close by, David sends another group of individuals and says to Abigail, would you become my wife? She's free to marry. Her husband is dead. Uh, 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 she has impressed the heck out of David with her political savvy and her economic uh, understanding of the situation. And she needs connection now to society because in those days, again, ladies, very sorry about this, but in those days when a woman was not attached to a man, read the book of Ruth if you want background on this, 
there, there was a need to become attached to a man in order to have standing in society. This is why Boaz becomes the redeemer of Naomi because Ruth marries Boaz. And so the families are joined and, a, and, and the, the family is continued. And the same thing happens here. Abigail comes along and is married to David. Anyone happen to know who Abigail's child was? I'll have to look it up. Anyone? Quick student? Nope. We'll look that one up. That'll be this afternoon. Please, please look up who Abigail's child was with David, because that's important. This was not David's first wife. Who was David's first wife? Yeah. Michal, or Michael. So this is David's second wife, and it's a wife that's now on the run with him in the desert of Paran. So you have, you have this instance in the Bible where the intentions that people have become very obvious, and the, the way in which they are related, related to God and related to the way in which he would like us to operate also become very obvious. Succinctly put, I think that we should be very careful to look at our own intentions when it comes to success and to blessing. God would like to make us successful. But the question we have to ask ourselves is, do we want the success that God has in mind for us? Because his, his definition of success may be different to ours. God has a, a way forward that he will see through if we trust him, and he is going to bless us. I, I'm, I believe this. He is going to bless us whether or not we do these things or not. Do you, do you believe that? Do you believe that, that people who are not following God are still blessed by God? I mean, how long did Saul live after Samuel told him, God is not with you anymore. He didn't, like, die on the spot. God kept him alive. And there were chances when he could have returned to God's, God's fold, but he still chose not to. So let's understand this very carefully, that, that in this world where, where we would all like economic success, God may have a say in all of that. He, he may want to say, this is what success looks like. And if we're willing to accept that, he is going to pour down blessings upon us and protection upon us that we may not be aware of, but that will be the reason why we become successful. Amen. And in doing that, uh, and, and in, sharing, in sharing what comes from that success, we give glory to God. Amen. We give glory to our benefactor. We do not act like Nabal. We act like Abigail. See, the, 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 the difference in the story is quite, quite stark. That's why I love this story. I don't want to be like Nabal. I don't want to judge my own success by the fact that I have 1,000 this and 3,000 that and then not share because I'm completely unaware or not giving any credit to God for the fact that who I am and what I am and what I have is completely as a result of his protection and his power and his love. Instead, he asks me to take what he has given me to manage out in the wilderness of Santa Clarita. He has given me this business to, and he says, okay, now... Uh, share that. Share that. And when you do so, others will participate in the blessings that you have received. This is how God's economy works. This is his intentions. And when we participate in it this way, we are successful, we are a blessing, and we show the intentions of God to our fellow human beings. And he is glorified as a result. And that, I can tell you, brings great joy, not only in heaven, but gives us true joy and true 
satisfaction. Is that, is that something that makes you feel a little better this Sabbath? I hope. Because this, this, is, this is a pretty tough story. Okay? This is, this is God's death and remarriage and all that kind of stuff in it. it. It's right here in the Bible. You can read the, the, full, the full version later on this afternoon. And then you can find out if you want to follow uh, David and Abigail further along. You can find out uh, the children that they had and how they played into the line of David. God bless you as you are out in your life doing what God has called you to do. May his intentions for you be seen in your life and in your surroundings. Amen. Amen.